Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how we can export this handsome CC character into Blender and then create a beautiful render in Blender, a Blender render. We're going to talk specifically about rendering PBR shaders with the Cycles render engine. For this tutorial you'll want to make sure that your Blender version is updated to 2.97b. Here is the character I've created in Character Creator that is currently set up with diffuse and opacity textures on the hair. If we take a look at the shoulder armor, you can see that it also contains metallic, roughness, displacement, AO, and glow texture maps which we'll use later. Now that we've taken a brief look at what sort of materials this character is made up of, let's proceed to export him by going up to the file menu and selecting export clothed character FBX. Here we want to ensure that we use the blender target tool preset and activate the embed texture option in order to include the diffuse, opacity, and normal texture maps into the FBX file. We don't need to export a motion with our character for now, so if we leave this deselected, he'll export with a standard T-Pose. Let's save our dude as Light Armor and click Save. Upon export, we'll see three items. The first is your standard FBX file. The second is a texture folder that includes all the textures that are not embedded in the FBX file. The third one is an FBX key file, which records some data as reference for importing the character back into Character Creator after it's been modified in Blender. Before import, the first thing we're going to do in Blender is set the render engine to Cycles Render, otherwise the material settings before this step will be missing. Then let's import by going to File, Import, and FBX, and selecting our file. Let's start by switching our viewport to Shader Material Mode, and you'll see Blender apply all the textures that were embedded into the FBX file. However, you'll notice right away that the opacity and normal effects are a little off particularly on the eyelashes, hair, and the fur cloak that our hero has draped over his shoulders. Let's start with the hair first by making sure it's selected, and then opening up the node editor, and quickly set our viewport to rendered mode. You'll see that Blender has auto-connected all of the nodes in the material graph. Let's go ahead and delete all these nodes since we're essentially going to be constructing the material from scratch here. Let's add in a new shader now called Principal BSDF, which is only available with Blender 2.97b, and includes all PBR related channels. Next, let's create an image texture node for our diffuse texture. You'll find the diffuse texture embedded in the FBX file. What you want to do next is link the color channel to the Principal BSDF's base color channel. Then create a new material output node and link BSDF to this node's surface, which makes him look like he has a bunch of post-it notes for hair. So what we need to do to avoid this is to create another image texture node which we'll use for the opacity texture map embedded in the FBX file. First let's bring in a couple of other nodes. We'll need a transparent BSDF shader as well as a mix shader. Let's place the mix shader in between the principal BSDF and the material output node. Then we'll find the opacity texture map in our second image texture node and pipe it into the mix shader node. Finally, we need to connect the transparent BSDF shader to the mix shader node. You can see now that the hair shader is producing the correct results. For even more fun shader creating times, you can follow the same procedure for the eyeballs and eyelashes as well. Let's take a look now at applying an IBL texture in Blender in order to observe the PBR effect in all its glory. Let's click on the World tab and then use Nodes, which will then be populated with Background for the Surface field. Once we select World in our Material Graph, you'll see it populated with a couple of nodes already. Getting this prepared is quite a bit easier than the hair and eyelashes. All we need to do is create an Environment Texture node and load our Character Creator HDR image onto it. Once we have it selected, let's just link up the color for environment texture and background, and voila, you'll see the magical forest IBL map appear as the background. Next, we're going to optimize the pauldron, which is a cool looking piece of shoulder armor that our character has. Again, the first item of business is to delete all the nodes of the original material graph, and you'll immediately see it appear as black in the viewport. Unless you want to go about manually creating all those nodes again, I'd recommend a quick Ctrl C to copy all of the connected nodes from the hair once it's selected, and then press Ctrl V to paste them into the pauldron material graph. From here you'll naturally want to replace the diffuse and opacity textures with the ones for the pauldron itself, unless you want your character to be wearing a weird human hair type item on his shoulders.
One of the things that the pauldron needs that the hair doesn't have, however, is a normal map to really emphasize the scratches and wearing on the metal part of it. So we'll need to create another image texture node and normal map node, which can be found under vector. Again, we'll want to make sure that we load up the normal map, and after that, then we're going to choose non-color data since we're not using a base color map. Select the normal map in your image texture node and then change color to non-color data. We'll then connect the three nodes, like so, to produce a more accurate normal effect on the metal part of our pauldron. You can see a very apparent effect in the before and after comparison here. To add the displacement effect, we need to create yet another image texture node, as well as a separate bump node. Let's throw that bump node in between the normal map and the principal BSDF nodes. You'll see them auto-connect. Next, let's load the displacement texture map and again set this one to non-color data. You'll need to pipe the color output of this node into the height channel of our bump node in order to see the displacement effect. We'll set the normal strength down to 1 and then the bump strength to 0.5 in order to avoid an overly bumpy surface. The next thing we want to do for our pauldron is create yet two more image texture nodes for our metallic and roughness values. Again, let's load the specific texture maps for both of these, and once that's done, they need to be set up with non-color data. When that's finished, we'll pipe them into their respective channels on the principal BSDF shader node. Here's a clear before and after where you can see the brilliant effect that adding in simple metallic and roughness maps can have on the pauldron. But wait, there's more! To add even more detail to our pauldron, we need to load in our AO texture map. First let's make a little room by minimizing a few of those nodes here, and then add yet another image texture node for our ambient occlusion or AO map. For this one we need to blend it in with our diffuse texture, so let's insert a mix RGB node between the diffuse image texture and the principal BSDF nodes before we load the AO map for our pauldron into its respective node. Once that's loaded in, we'll set the Mix RGB node to Multiply, and you'll see a noticeable difference between our before and after comparisons, particularly around the collar area where there appears to be more depth. You thought you were done with the pauldron, didn't you? Well, it turns out there's one more step for the finishing touch. So let's repeat the procedure one final time by adding an Image Texture node, this time for our Glow Map. This time we're going to add in a new shader node called Emission, which will connect to our glow map. But first we need to add a generic shader node and place it between the mix shader and the material output nodes. Let's then load up our final glow map and then pipe the image texture node to the color channel of the emission node, and then the emission node to the generic shader node you'll then see the glowing emblem appear on our hero's shoulders. If we take down the strength of our IBL map, you can see the glowing effect more clearly. So those are basically the steps you need to follow in order to generate the correct material results when exporting your Character Creator 3 character into Blender. From there, you can use the Cycles render in Blender to create a visually tender Blender render. Again, thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com for more info and other tips. And I hope to see you in the next video.